Here's the question for today. How much power is an intake manifold worth on a five liter Ford? The answer, it depends. In this video, we're gonna take a look at intake manifold upgrades on a five liter Ford. So how much power is an intake manifold worth? Well, your results may vary. And not because the intakes aren't worth power or because we don't know what we're doing when we dyno test. The reality is the power gains you get from an intake upgrade vary with the test motor. You see on a stock motor, the gains, not as much. On a modified motor, bigger gains. So that's why I included three different tests, one on a stock or very mildly modified motor and two on modified motors. Let's check it out. To illustrate that the power gains offered by intake upgrades on a five liter Ford obviously differ depending on the combination, I ran three different tests and this first one was run basically on a stock 302. It did have a forged flat top piston in it with a valve relief so that we could eventually run cams in it because we ran a bunch of stuff on this motor. We actually ran a turbo and, and nitrous and all kinds of stuff. But in this configuration, it was the flat top piston, the factory E7 TE iron heads, it did have uh, a valve spring upgrade on it because we were going to put cams on the stock heads. This thing had the stock HO intake, the stock throttle body. It did have long tube headers on it. So basically it was a stock 5 liter with headers on it. And what we did was compare the factory HO intake manifold to a GT40 upgrade, you know, which was pretty common back in the day. So I wanted to show you how much a GT40 intake was worth on a very stock kind of mild combination because the power gains offered by any intake upgrade on a five liter or any other motor really are dependent upon the combination that you're putting it on. Right now in stock trim, the intake manifold was definitely holding back the power, but so were other things. The cylinder heads were holding it back. The camshaft was holding it back. So upgrading just one thing that's holding the power production back has minimal gains compared to having everything else be right and then upgrading the intake at the last minute. So let's take a look and see, this was our combination. This was our 302 with long tube headers on it, stock cam, stock head, stock HO, upper and lower intake, stock throttle body. So run in this configuration, our nearly stock five liter produced 261 horsepower and 321 foot pounds of torque. Kind of standard, this is, we, we've run a ton of these stock five liters on there and they're all kind of in this area in the 250 to 260 horsepower range. So here's what happened when we installed the GT40 upper and lower intake manifold. So we did get a gain as expected, lost a little, just a tiny bit down here at 3000 RPM, but the power output jumped from 261 horsepower up to 279 horsepower. The peak torque changed very little, although it did shift it out slightly, 323 foot-pounds, but it happened out here at 3,900 RPM. So the GT40, as we've come to expect over all of these decades, was worth power compared to the HO intake and it allowed the thing to you know rev out there a little bit farther and make it a little bit better power. Now we've always liked the GT40 and Ford must have sold like a million of these intake manifolds because everybody wanted them. So this is kind of the thing would happen if you went to the junkyard and grabbed the, the Cobra or Explorer upper and lower intake manifold off of a, you know, of a five liter Explorer, you could upgrade it. And this is kind of what you would expect but you would get even greater power gains if you had a modified motor to put that on. So let's check that out. After comparing that GT40 upper and lower to the factory HO stuff on the near stock five liter, I ran another test basically on the same motor, but after it had been upgraded. So we installed my favorite cam, that XE274HR cam and a set of ported RHS heads on that same 302. And then we were running it with the GT40 intake and then upgraded to a Holly System X. So the Holly System X had been ported. The guys at Extrude Hone, porting, uh, Extrude Hone did some porting, uh, you know, on the internal passages and stuff, which worked out really well. But what I want to show you is what happens when we upgrade the intake manifold from a good intake, which the GT40 is, to an even better intake, but on a combination that really needs more intake. You know, we didn't see too much of a gain from the GT40 on the stock stuff. But here's our combination with the RHS heads, the 274 cam, and the GT40 intake. So this, the power output was up to 354 horsepower, 
and peak tor torque was up to 378 foot-pounds. So here's what happened when we put the ported Holly System X intake manifold on it in place of the GT40. So we got some good gains, but again, most of it at the top. So the peak power using the new System X, ported System X intake, jumped up to 394 horsepower. And as you can see, because of the difference in the intake design, the GT40 is really pretty good for the stuff down low, as we saw, even in comparison to the factory HO intake, the GT40 stuff does fairly well. So the ported System X intake lost power below 4,700 RPM, and you know, by as much as from 340, oh, by 24 foot-pounds down there at 3,700 RPM, but gained power out at the top. And really what I want to show you is that the fact that we had running the intake test depends, the gains that you get depend on what you're testing it on. If you have a combination that already has a good cam, already has ported heads, and the last thing that you upgrade is the intake manifold, you're going to show greater gains from that intake upgrade. I mean, the gains would have been tremendous had we compared this intake manifold to the factory HO manifold on this, they would have been dramatic, but much less so when we test it on a stock motor. So that the gains you get are dependent on the combination you're testing on. So let's check out another test. So here we have another test run on a 30 over 5 liter, and it had flat top pistons. It had a set of Holley Systemax aluminum heads, and also had that Comp Extreme Energy XE274 HR camshaft. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up if you guys don't already know that by heart. But the camshaft is good and it works well. But here's here was a test where I compared the factory HO intake manifold to an Edelbrock RPM2, which is a very good intake for these combinations. But knowing what we know from the previous two tests and that the order that you test these things in, since this combination already has good cylinder heads, it already has the right camshaft, the only thing that's missing now is the intake, what do you guys think is gonna happen? Let me know in the comments. How much power are we going to gain from the intake swap, knowing that we already have the other two components that help make power before we do the intake test? Remember, it's the order that you test them in, you know, not just the part, it has to work too, but the order that we test them in makes a big difference in how much power we gain. So how much power are we going to get from the RPM2 intake manifold? Well, let's take a look. So, <laughs> equipped with the HO intake and the cam and the Holly heads, our 302 produced 318 horsepower and 354 foot-pounds of torque. After adding the RPM2 intake, the peak power jumped up to 384 horsepower. So we got a gain of 30 horsepower, or actually <laughs> 30 horsepower, from, three, from 318 to 384, or 385, 384.9. So that's actually a very big jump. So how many of you guessed that much? I mean, that's a ton of power. You can see all this, and the power output the intake manifold picked up power from about 4,000 all the way out, and peak torque was up to 368 foot-pounds of torque. So because this combination already had the, enough compression and displacement and had the right, had a decent set of cylinder heads and a good camshaft, the only thing that was missing from this combination was a good intake manifold. So in that situation, when you add the intake manifold to it, it makes a lot of power. So here's something to think about, and this is a mistake guys make very often. So if we see that this gain, if we see that this thing gained 65 horsepower, let's say, from the intake manifold, what guys will do, if we were to, if that gained 65 horsepower from the intake manifold, but if we were to test this camshaft and, and this man, this combination already had the intake and the cylinder heads and all it needed was the camshaft and we replaced the factory cam with that Extreme Energy 274 cam, we might pick up 40 or 50 horsepower. Um, or if we were to test the cylinder heads and it already had the camshaft and the intake and we would replace the cylinder heads, it might pick up 40 or 50 horsepower. So what guys will do is they'll add the 50 horsepower from the heads and the 50 horsepower from the cam and the 50 horsepower from the intake and pretty soon you have a gain of 150 horsepower from these bolt-ons, but it doesn't really work that way because the order that you test them in determines the gain offered by that piece. Obviously, the piece has to work well, too, as I said. So it's important to remember that. The gain that you get from the combination or the gain that you get from the piece depends on the combination that you tested on. 
That's how intakes work. That's how cylinder heads work. That's how camshafts work. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about our intake testing on the five liter four? Now we all know the right intake makes a big difference, but it makes an even bigger difference when you test it on a modified motor. Don't expect 40, 50, 60 horsepower from an intake upgrade on a stock motor but on a modified version that already has the right camshaft and the right cylinder heads, big gains are possible with the right intake. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.